Hello, my name is Amphiande and welcome to the third episode of my bootcamp series. In this episode I will talk about capture points or objectives, um, how they work and just some general tips and tricks that you want to know about how the A, B and C point works on the competitive 5v5 fire and fight mode. Because that's what we're going to talk about, that's what this channel is about, 5v5 firefight in a competitive setting. Uh, with me I have my two retards here, Meowfius and Leophyte, that are both on my team. And they're just gonna help to show how it looks when you cap a point and just help me show some visual stuff. So, uh, yeah, I guess we'll get right into it. So, since I have Meowfius and Leo with me now, I'm gonna start off by showing the thing that they can help me with. And that is to show how an, an objective behaves depending on how many friendlies and enemies are on it. If I step on stop to start you can see that it's capping at a normal speed it takes 20 seconds in ESL takes 25 seconds in the DGL to cap it from 0 to 100 if Meowfius steps on now it will go much faster as you can see that this is what I call speed capping or fast capping Leo step on and decap so that's how it looks when we're capping really fast that's two people on it it's not double as fast I don't know the exact numbers but it's definitely faster it doesn't go from 20 seconds on ESL down to 10, but it goes maybe down to taking only 15 seconds or 12 and a half, I would guess, or something like that. So that's fast capping for you. That doesn't work, however, when an enemy is on it. So if me and Meowfius steps on at the same time, we should be fast capping, right? But we're not, because Leophyte is on it at the same time. So instead, we're what I call slow capping. We're capping it even slower than the normal cap when you're just alone on an objective. So this is slow capping if Leo steps off you'll see fast capping. Very big difference. That that way you can know. If you have two people on, we can step off me. If you have two people on, then you yeah, you know that an enemy is on it depending on if you're fast capping or if you're slow capping. This works as well if you're free friendlies and they have two enemies, but that's pretty rare that there's two enemies and three en friendlies on the same point. So usually about 1v1 or 2v1. So this is really good information to know. If Leo stands behind T2 there, just in the middle of it, and I step on the point, it's now blocked. I know this, because if I look at the bottom, I don't need to know that Leo is behind there. I know he's behind there. There's no other point. He needs to be within this square to cap the point. And I see everything... Oh, sorry. I see everything else, so I know that he must be behind there. Same deal if Meowfia steps on. And a lot of players now would be like, yeah, we're capping the B point, we're capping it. But if you know about this, you'll see actually there is an enemy on it. And if you don't know about the slow capping part of it, you wouldn't know that he's behind there. But I know this now, I can spray this down, and you could technically get a kill on Leo. But this gun does not have much penetration. Uh, Leo, step off and let us cap it. Now we're fast capping again, Leo stepped off, that's how it looks. I want to show you one more thing. So now we got it capped, Leo can step on, Meow can step off. So this is same deal basically. The B point is blinking now. If Leo steps off, really quick step off. Now it's not blinking. Step on again. Now it's blinking. That shows whenever it's down to zero and then he steps on again, that's when the point will start blinking. And it's the exact same deal here. It's blocked now. If Meow steps on, it's gonna start to slow cap or slow decap kind of decapping it. But until Leo fight is dead, we're not gonna it's never gonna stop blinking because if an enemy is on the objective it's always gonna blink okay uh, there's more about this but I wanted to get this over with because I have my friends with me here right now so uh, I think we showed the main things that has to do with fast capping slow capping being blocked uh, Leo fight meow do you have anything that I missed that we should bring up while we are all three of us here I think that's pretty much it then okay uh, we'll go on to the next point so I thank Leophyte and Meophius for helping me out with that and I can now go on myself by talking a bit about some other subjects surrounding objectives. First of all I want to explain to you why it why it's not always a positive thing to capture an objective and why it actually can be a negative thing or a very negative thing to be honest. That might be a bit confusing in the beginning. From personal experience I know that a lot of newer teams and newer players always cap a point if they have the if they have the opportunity, they're always capping it. And that's, I mean, it makes sense coming from other game modes and stuff, like push. It's all, never a bad idea to cap an objective and push. But in Firefight 5v5, it definitely is. If you have five players alive and you cap the point, that means that you now cap the point without, obviously, 
like bringing back any of your dead members, which is the whole point of capping objectives, but you also gave the enemy two offense objectives. An offense objective is basically points that are the enemies but that you can cap. So you start off with have one defense and one offense. On this side, security has this as defense point, and they have Charlie as offense point, and the opposite for insurance, of course. Bravo is always a neutral point on every map. So by capping Bravo to your side, you're giving the enemy another offense point, and you're giving yourself one offense point less. So if you now want to cap back some of your dead members, you only have Charlie as an option. You gotta get to Charlie and cap that to get your dead friend back. While the enemy can choose either cap Bravo or cap Alpha, which obviously puts a lot of pressure on you. You have to defend two points now. So capping a point early, it's preferably you don't want to cap a point early, but if you have one or two guys dead, then yeah, it's probably a good idea. But if you have no one dead, you definitely should never cap a point, because Especially the earlier in the round, the bigger the service it does to your team. If I'm running onto Bravo and nobody's on it here, I'm just getting it for free. I'm just running, oh great, I'm capping this point, and then I cap it to 100%. That means that if I run off now and die, there's no way for my friends to cap me back in, unless getting to Charlie, and that's very difficult, because that's obviously the enemy's start-off defense point. They have a huge advantage getting to here. They can get here very quick, they can set up the fence there. They can have one guy basically watching the whole damn thing from just maybe staring on this box. He can just watch the whole thing. They cannot get to Charlie from him because he's covering this and he's covering this. While getting to Bravo, it, as it is the neutral point, it's equally fast for both teams to get to here. So this is by far the easiest point to cap right off the bat in the beginning of a round. And if you cap it without actually bringing anyone back, you just took away that you just gave an advantage to the enemy team there, basically. So, what you want to do instead is, when you have five players alive, you step off the point. You simply cap it up to 90%, 95, maybe even 99, but capping it to 99 is very risky. Because if you stand on it for half a second longer, you're going to cap it. And, as I said before, you might just have lo lost the round right there by capping it, actually. I know it sounds stupid, but you might lose a round for your team just by capping a point too early. So, step off at 95%. That means that if a friendly of yours steps on this point now, it only takes them about 1-2 seconds to cap it up all the way to 100 and to basically bring back someone who's dead. So either when you step off you get into some kind of corner or defensive position, this is a pretty normal one for security to get into, and you can sit there and as soon as he hears a friend die, ah, I'm down in workshop, then boom, get on. And you should be able to get it, unless you die when you're running to it, but it's, it's worth the risk, you know, to run towards it. So get on the point then, and that's when you want to cap it. Now you have that 5v5 again, because your teammate made a mistake, or maybe even the teammate killed a guy and then died instantly. Like, say that your teammate in here, he killed this guy, boom, and then he died by an enemy in the arch. Then what you can do is that simply just get on here and look towards the arch. Boom, you kept back your old teammate. That guy in the workshop is obviously dead still for the enemy team, because they didn't get any cap point themselves. And then you could kill this guy, and then it's all of a sudden a 5v3. So, if it was the opposite, if you already capped this point and runs off here, and your friend dies, and yeah, this guy in here kills you, even if you run up here and kill you, it's still only a 4v3, and the enemy team cannot group up and cap Bravo, while your team cannot do the same. You cannot get back your guy who died in there. You have to go to Charlie to do that, so that's a big negative point. Step off at 95%, always, 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 unless the timer has ticked down to somewhere around 5, 10, 15 seconds. Because when the timer runs to zero, the team who has the most points, they win the round. So that's when you want to cap a point, even if you have five players alive already. Otherwise, in 99% of cases, never cap the point when you have five alive. It's better to run off and die than it is to stay on the point and stay alive, in my opinion. Being here, running off and dying by a guy in the arch, you died, you can call out, he's in their arch, it's an easy refrag for your team if they have their eyes on it, like everybody knows now, then you know a position of an enemy player, but also you might have a guy back here that can run onto Bravo, you might have a guy in here that can easily run on, maybe a guy in here even that can run on as well, multiple ways for friendlies to get on and they only have to be on the point for two seconds. The last thing that's very very good by capping up to 95% is that the enemy team now gets such a big headache if they step on. If they step on the point and they see that it's capped to 99% red, basically the enemy team, then like, they have to either decide, hmm, oh shit, fuck this, I can't cap this, it's gonna take me such a long time, because they have to decap it all the way down to zero and then back up to their own side. And depending on the theater, like ESL takes 20 seconds to cap, DGL takes 25, 
So on DGL, which is the longest, of course, if the point is capped to 99% for the enemy team, he has to step on D cap 25 seconds and then up cap 25 seconds, and that's 50 seconds total. So that's a lot of time, and he can probably get killed pretty easily by standing here for 50 seconds. So putting it up to 95% makes a big, big, big difference for your team, but also it's very negative for the enemy team. While the opposite, if you cap it too early, it's it's the opposite. It's a big disservice for your own team, and it helps the enemy team out a ton. So, um, yeah. It might not seem that important, or why did he talk about this for such a long time, but it's a big, big point when it comes to objectives. Think about when, why am I capping this objective. I'm capping it to bring back a member. If I am capping it without bringing back a member, I'm doing nothing for my team, and I'm actually doing something good for the enemy team by bringing them another objective that only they can cap, basically. You're giving them an exclusive cap, an exclusive way of getting back someone who died on their team. So the next thing I want to talk about is hunting for objectives instead of hunting for kills. What I mean with that is that if you play the objectives and if you play around them, you don't technically have to hunt for the kills because the kills are going to come to you. And at the same time, you're obviously bringing objectives up towards your own side so if you need to you can cap back members of your own team that died if you kill someone great you kill someone but if you cap point you brought back your own players which in my opinion is way more valuable especially if you bring back two players killing one player against bringing back two players obviously bringing back two is more valuable um, so a good example can be as we said before a B guy Bravo guy runs on he caps it up to 90 and then he steps off and he dies while he steps off Say he steps off through here, he runs up into this corner, and instantly someone in the window peeks him and kills him. And then this guy calls out, I'm down, he's apps windows. That's apartments, that's called apps, apps windows. A player who might be back here or something is watching through here, playing some kind of long range role or something, is covering these entrances. All what I see a lot of times is then they go hunt for this kill. They go up here, and then they're like, I'm gonna kill the guy in apps. And that might work, as I said. I'm not saying it's a bad idea, but preferably, what a much safer way to think, do, and something that helps your team a lot more, you just play the objective instead. Get out here, take it a bit safe, watch the windows, of course, because that's where someone got killed from, and then step on the point. Because st being on a point for a long time is risky. The longer you're on it, the more risk. But since your friend already capped it up to 95%, you only have to be on it for one second or something. And then you got your guy back again. So... Now you're all of a sudden in a 5v5 again, or maybe even a 5v4 if someone managed to refrag that guy. So, that's a safe way of playing it. An even better example, or even more common that I see when it definitely comes to hunting, is players who play aggressive roles, flankers. Usually these are really good players that I see in pugs and teams. But I think they do something that, in my opinion, is a bit risky and unnecessary. Uh, and that is, say they cap it up to 99% here again, or 95 and then they step on, but instead of going into a corner, they get up here, and uh, boom, they get in the pick there. They're killing that gang garage. The enemy team will call the, me out now. They know where I am, the player in garage will say, ah, I'm down garage, he's in our street. And maybe someone on this guy's teams, who I am now, I'm a security player, he, someone on his team call us, there's one in apartments. It can be very, very tempting when you're in the street to just go for here, and go up to apartments and try to pick this guy. Wherever he could be. But that's the point, wherever he could be, he could be anywhere up here, there's no way for me of knowing, and the guy down there, the, the guy up here could just as easily know that I'm down here. So, while this can be a good idea to get the flanks in other lanes, the safer way of playing it, and what I started preferring a lot, and which also helps your team a ton at the same time, is just going for Charlie and let him come to you. Because if that guy stays in apartments up there, he basically, someone else must come to you then. And apartments is probably the best rotator, so the apartments guy will have to come down to you instead. And this is the thing, playing the objectives. If you know how to play certain objectives on different maps well, you can be dominating people as long as you get there. If you get to the point and you know how to play it, if you know the angles right, if you know how and where enemy likes to come from, you just play some mind games, then you can not only kill him instead of going up into apps, you can kill him here and get the point and maybe bring back someone who just died or simply cap this point and someone caps B at the same time and boom you got all three points and you out cap the enemy team so I will show you in a later video actually how to play different cap points on different maps but just as a sneak peek or a quick thing instead of going up and getting that pick in, in apps I'm very comfortable on district, I know certain spots 
And this one, for example, if I'm sitting here, I'm capping the point, I'm making them come to me, because if they don't, I'm gonna get a free cap, and they don't want that, so they're gonna come to me, I know that for sure. If I'm watching this entrance, I know that if the point, that's the thing with playing the point, I can use the point as a buffer, so if an enemy steps on now, that they w it will notify me, I know that someone is on the point with me, and since I know he didn't come for this entrance, because if he did, I would have seen him or killed him, I know that he got to be here. He gotta have come from this entrance or this, because after playing this trick for some time, you know that nobody will ever come from behind here or something, they simply don't have time for that in the middle of a round. So, you can sit here, and now you know where exactly where he is. Compared to running up into apartments, he could hide in every single corner. But here, you're forcing him to come to you. So from here you can do whatever you want, you can wait him out if you want, you can sit there and wait, because you technically don't have to push him. Or you can simply go for the kill, and just go out or something, and just kill him here, because you know, he's in this area, there's no other way he could be, you're watching the only other spot he could have been, because the C point is rather small. Same thing on Alpha. As I said, I'm gonna go over some points later, to talk about how you wanna play a point. But same thing here, if you're hiding in a corner like this and watching this, he could have come through either there, or he could have come through here, and you don't technically know that if he was silent. But if you're seeing something like this, if he comes through the glass, you'll see him, you'll shoot him. If he doesn't come through the glass, you'll know he's here. That's the only spot he could be. Well, he could be in there, but same deal. If someone comes from Bravo to block you, they're not going to run all the way around here and go through the back door. That simply doesn't happen in competitive play, they don't have time for that. So if you're sitting here and playing the objective well, you'll get this kill very easily. Same same as on the other side. Instead of, you say you get the kill here in cafe, instead of, hmm, I'm gonna go for a flank around and try to kill these guys in the street, instead of doing that, let them come to you, play the objective, get on it, and learn your angles where you can stay to see a m maximal amount of angles or entrances into the point. So if you're staying here, you'll hear them, if they come from here, you'll hear them, and you can easily turn around. And if they don't come from there, you know that there's only one spot you can be, you can only be in this specific corner here, so you can just pre-fire that guy. But I'm sitting here, waiting for a guy to come through the glass, boom, dead, boom, dead, if he comes there, if he's not, he's here, and I can pre fire this, like that. So, play the objectives instead of hunting for kills. This applies to so many players, not only new players, but even better players that I see lose important rounds for their own teams, because in pugs, and against teams with bad communication, this works. Just running around like a madman, flanking people in different lanes, but the lanes are not important, there's nothing up here to gain, to be honest. The things to gain are in here. And on Bravo, that's where you get the points. The points are what is important. That will draw out the enemy of their hiding spots, basically. So, yeah, I think I'll probably make a future uh, video about different maps and how to play objectives to their maxim maximum effect. Um, but for now, we'll get on to the last point of this video. Which is obviously about objectives as well, and this is about when you're on an objective and knowing when you need to push the enemy and when you don't have to push the enemy. It's very simple. If you're on an objective and get blocked, if you your team has the man advantage, you do not have to push that enemy. If your team does not have the man advantage, if the enemy has it, you have to push him. If it's a stalemate, you gotta have to figure out, hmm, is it worth it, is it not worth it, that's more difficult. But if you're in a 1v2, you have to push that guy who's blocking you. You have to kill him as fast as possible. Why? Well, if you don't kill him as fast as possible, the second guy, it's a 1v2, the second guy who's not on the objective with you, he can do something else. He can either flank you or come with his friend. The guy is just blocking you, and the other guy can do whatever he wants. He can cap another point and bring back so it's a 1v5 instead, or he can just come here to help and it's a 2v1 inside the cap point, which is obviously very difficult to win. That's why I don't like these kind of hiding spots in objectives, like sitting here, if you're blocked, boom, now I'm blocked, I have no idea where he is. I only know that he's not in this room, that's the only thing I know. He could have come from this door, he could have come from the glass, or he could have come from here. There's no way of me of knowing. Opposite, compared to this, I know everything. Either I die when he enters, or I kill him. Like, that's the only two options. He either comes from here, I kill him. He either comes from here, I kill him. Or he either comes from here, I kill him. Or I die, basically. But if I sit in here, it can turn into a stalemate. And that's, that's good if you're in a 2v1 situation. You can sit in here all day, the enemy can block you, you just tell your friend, he's on he's on A with me, you can go cap Bravo. You don't have to worry, like it's a 2v1, you can cap Bravo, no worries. But if it's the opposite, you have to push him. So if you happen to sit in this situation, try not to get into this kind of situation in the first. But if you are in any of these kind of corners here where you don't have a view of the different exits, if you're sitting here, you watch nothing, you basically only know he didn't come through here. 
you'll have to push him. Very, very risky. The quicker, the, the better. Because if you wait, reinforcement will come. That's basically the main idea behind it. The longer you wait, the more people you'll have to play against. So sometimes, if I'm playing a pug or something, or other experienced players, maybe tell a new guy, hey, you gotta push him, you gotta push him. And the new guy still sits here, and it's like, no, I don't want to, like, it's risky, I don't know where he is. And they're like, you have to push him, trust me. If you don't push him, there's gonna come more enemies. Like, that's what you have to tell people. So I'd rather tell you in this video instead, because if you're sitting here and waiting, eventually it's gonna be a 1v2, 1v3, 1v4, 1v5 on the objective. And if you can pull that off, great, but I mean, no, that's simply not possible. It's much better to take a risky play and try to kill him in a 1v1 real quick, pre-fire some corners or something, then it is to just wait, because what do you have to gain from waiting? You have The only thing that can happen is that the enemy is stupid and he pushes you. But any good player will not do that. A good player that comes through here and blocks, and he knows he is in a 2v1, he will just wait for his friend to do a move. He will just say, okay, I got it blocked, uh, go cap bravo. Or, okay, I got it blocked, come help me. He's either in dark room or he's in the back room. I know he's one, one of those two spots. So the longer you wait when you're in, at a disadvantage, the more enemies will come and the bigger disadvantage you will have. So even though it might feel risky, push, 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 as long as you have the numbers disadvantage. Okay, that's pretty much it of this video. Uh, hopefully I can come out with a bootcamp episode 4 pretty soon. Uh, I'm gonna think what it's gonna be about, probably about lanes, how to play lanes, and how lanes should help out the B guy, because as we just talked about in this episode, the B guy is the most important player, like getting B is the most important thing. Playing the lanes, play the objectives instead of playing the lanes basically. Think of everything you do should be, have an objective as the end goal. So that's it for this video about objectives. If you have any questions, post it in the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.